Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to use some alcohol ink on Yupo paper and make this cute octopus card. The stamps I'm using are from Hero Arts. I'll link all the supplies up in the video description at various places where you can find them because sometimes the prices change and you want to get the best deal. I'm also using some alcohol pens. Um, these are the Spectrum Noir markers that happen to be on a huge sale at Consumer Crafts right now. I just got the two new sets of 24 that I didn't have yet. Those are on sale for $24, a 24 pack, and the others are $20 a 24 pack so make sure you check them out if you need some markers and what I'm doing is just scribbling a few shades those two were very close to each other um, on this um, piece of Yupo paper if you don't have Yupo paper you can use like um, a glossy cardstock or um, like a laser print paper because that might be glossy enough to get this a very similar effect and the reason I want to show you this with markers is because I know a lot of you guys have sharpies or uh, Bic markets or Copic markers or other alcohol markers and I just wanted to show you this technique this way so you know you don't have to have bottles of alcohol ink to get the same effect so now I'm just using a little pipette and some alcohol and I'm just dropping it onto the surface and you can see what happens here it kind of displaces the ink and lets it um, kind of pushes the pigment around Around. Now I've just taken my little homemade ink blending tool, which is just a piece of craft store felt. I cut a bunch of the 25 cent a sheet felt up into tiny little squares and put Velcro on a building block. And that's what I use as a alcohol ink blending tool. And it is so cheap because you can make like, a, I don't know, hundred little squares of felt for like 25 cents. I buy the white felt when it's on sale at the craft store and um, you make your own. It works just as well as the expensive store-bought Tim Holtz one. So um, I save the money to use for the stamps and the markers and I make the stuff I can make myself. And so here I'm just adding some drops of ink. You could go ahead and um, scribble your marker on that pad if you wanted to. I just wanted to kind of show you both ways so that um, no matter what you have, you can get the effect you want. I do like dripping the ink directly onto the wet surface as well. You get some really cool bubbles that way. And if it's too strong of a contrast, you can just go in with your ink blending tool and just keep tapping it out. I'm keeping this section of the video real time so you can kind of see how quickly all of this happens. You end up getting kind of like a geode look to it and you can keep playing with it as much as you want. Now the advantage of having the Yupo paper versus a like a glossy cardstock is that you can always kind of remove that ink. I mean, it might stain the paper a little bit, but you can get back to that white. You don't end up with a muddy, dark color like you could. And a lot of people ask me if I can, if you can do this on photo paper. Photo paper is kind of the opposite of like a glossy cardstock or a Yupo paper. Photo paper is designed to grab the ink quickly and let it dry, um, you know, because you don't want to smear your ink jet prints when they come out of your printer, so it's designed to do that, whereas glossy cardstock is designed to dry very slowly, and Yupo is a completely um, synthetic plastic sheet that has an actual barrier so that um, you can always lift it up, where you can't do that in, in glossy cardstock. Now I'm just using a marker, and I'm just kind of scribbling any white areas on the edges because I want to be able to use this entire piece of cardstock. Um, so I'm just kind of playing here by um, pressing my marker onto the paper to see if it will release enough uh, ink and what happens usually if your paper's wetter than your marker then it's going to want to soak up some of the ink um, if your paper is drier than your marker then it will let you put ink down so I'm able to put a little bit of ink down I can draw waves in I could even erase um, dried ink with a marker and you're going to see that technique coming up in a little bit but basically I just wanted to make sure there were no white spots make sure you scribble off your marker on a scrap if you do this because it will pick up some of the ink on the surface and um, that way you won't be in for a surprise the next time you use your marker so I'm going to go back in with a little bit more alcohol ink because um, I just wanted to have some more smaller dots. You'll find that the wetter your paper is, the more your colors are going to blend together. As your the bottom layer of ink starts to dry and you go and tap more on like I'm doing here, you're going to get those small little um, uh, kind of bubbly look and you're going to get that more distinct look. So it just depends. If you want it more blendy, then um, work the paper all at once while it's wet. If you want the colors to be more... Um, be more tiny, you want the colors to be more kind of divided, then just, just tap over after it dries and you'll get those small little shapes back again. So I wanted to have one piece of paper I could practice on uh, in case, you know, I didn't want to ruin the whole thing because it's such a pretty background <laughs> in case my stamping didn't go very well. So I just started off by chopping that piece of paper in half and that was a five by seven. So I figured I could get two cards out of it if I played my cards right. <laughs> a little card making pun there for you. Uh, here I'm using some ancient page ink. I've had this for a long time. I don't even know if they make it anymore but um 
I decided that I wanted to use this because I didn't have, I only have like two colors of Ranger Archival and I really wanted a soft blue. So I thought that this probably would dry on my Yupo paper where a regular dye based ink, I didn't know if it would dry um, on top of the alcohol ink. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the base layer of this Hero Arts Octopus with this, uh, with one of the blue shades from this Ancient Page um, Petal Point ink pad. So here I'm pressing it down and I have to apologize if my head gets in the shot because when I go to line things up, I'm going to have to kind of stick my head in there because I can't um, line it up. Now this was kind of like a bummer. It was really light and not very, um, not very solid. So I thought, well, maybe I'll take a, a paper towel and try to wipe some of it away. Uh, that didn't work too well. It was kind of almost smearing stuff. So I was like, oh boy, well, this is going to be my practice piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp the other layer on top and I'll get all my practicing out of the way with this one. And I'll show you that practice piece in a little bit, but right now I grabbed the other sheet and decided to re-moisten my ink pad and give it another go. So I have, um, this ink pad had plenty of ink in it, so I just added a little bit of moisture to the pad so I would be able to get a juicy impression. And you can see that that is really inky now. And I'm gonna give this another shot here. So I'm stamping this on the other half of my cardstock. And um, you're going to see that it's going to be a lot darker. So, but then I was like, geez, it's a little darker than I want. So I think I'm going to try to wipe some of that away. So I just carefully grabbed a tissue and just kind of twisted and lifted to kind of get some of that ink off. Blotting it with the tissue also helped that ink dry and it just left a little bit of a stain behind, which um, is kind of what the effect I was going for. So I inked the top level of this stamp with my Ranger Archival Black and there's my head in the way. It's really humid out. So I've got this like major frizzy mess going on. So please don't mind that. I did have to like look straight down on my stamp to line it up. Uh, you could use like a Misty or another stamp positioner if you have one, I don't. Uh, so there, I was pretty happy with the way that looked. I'm just kind of eyeballing it straight on to make sure I did line it up pretty well. And um, it stands out against the background, which is what I was going for. So there's some other cool um, images that come in this set. So I just wanted to try kind of building a scene on this alcohol background. I don't know, it might even be prettier just to leave it as is, but... I don't know, I like to gild the lily, I guess. So I'm just throwing in some seaweed and I'm gonna put in some other little sea creatures as well. The issue that I'm having stamping over the background is that I'm getting kind of like a muddy look where the, you can see the colors through each other. Uh, so I'm thinking that probably if you're gonna go through the um, the trouble of creating a really cool alcohol ink background, that maybe you should just kind of keep it to one focal image and that's it so the beautiful background can show through because otherwise it does kind of get a little busy and a little muddy. But um, the octopus is definitely going to be the star of the show. I just wish that the colors were a little bit crisper of what I stamped on top. I decided I wanted some highlights on this um, octopus, so I'm going in with my, a marker. It doesn't really matter what color because you can kind of squeegee out the dried ink. And I am just um, wiping it across the highlight areas and pulling off some of that ink and then just scribbling it off on my scrap paper. I'm just using my latest color teal that I have here, this kind of soft aqua um, to do this. You could use a clear blending one if you really want to get a nice bright highlight, but this kind of just gives you an extra level um, or an extra layer of highlight to your image. So it's a great, um, it's a great tip when you're working on uh, Yupo paper. So now it's time to make our card. I had actually cut my two stamped panels with this die, but it was the largest die ahead in my set, so I couldn't cut a mat for it. But then I thought, ah, I will set this die down on my white cardstock and use it like a stencil. So I just sprayed some blue and some uh, sandy colored ink right on top of the die. And that's gonna give me a light mat when I layer my, my uh, die cut piece on top, the piece that I had stamped. So to make it dry quickly and to clean off my die, I'm simply just um, blotting it with a tissue and there is our base layer. If I had it to do over again, I wouldn't have stamped um, these like fish and other things like that on the panel with the octopus. I would have left it plain because I'm going to stamp these things again on the card base and I think it looks so much nicer on the card base. I'm using my Distress Oxide inks to kind of build the little underwater scene here. Um, I took all the little fish from that Hero Art set and put them on one block so I could kind of fill a background in quickly. I really like this seaweed and it looks so much prettier stamped on the, um, on the card base with kind of a more opaque ink like the Distress Oxides than it did on the alcohol ink background. But, you know, live and learn. If you don't experiment, you'll never, you'll never know. 
I also thought that, um, that the starfish would be really cute. And since these inks are a little more opaque, they stand out enough on top of the um, spray dyed surface that uh, it just gives you a really, uh, really neat look. You can actually ink the starfish up in orange and then get the edges with some red to give it a little bit more dimension if you want to. And then there's this little, I don't know if it's a sea urchin or anemone or what, but I really like that red color. So I'm stamping that a few times as well. And there you can see how the background looks. If you need to kind of, if it worked a little bit while you were spraying it, you can just kind of bend it back. And there you can see how it's going to look when we have our uh, panel on top. To give my frame a little more definition, I set my uh, die cut back down on my panel and I just traced it with a marker and you could use whatever color you want. I chose the soft aqua color, but uh, the other one I did, I used the darker aqua and both were really pretty. So uh, do whatever you want. I think it really gives a nice crisp edge because the sprayed edge was a little fuzzy. To give my stamped panel a little more dimension, I used foam squares to adhere it onto the card base. I decided to keep the embellishments lightweight and simple. I had this um, sheet of foil anchors. I believe it was from the company Amy's Magic. I bought it at a stamp show a couple years ago. Um, and I just used some silver, I'm sorry, some gold crochet cotton to um, kind of give it the kind of the chain, I guess. I th think the way that the, the metallic thread kind of catches a light, it looks like it could be like a chain. And I just kind of played with the string, wrapping it around to kind of give some direction around the card and interest. So before you glue it down, just kind of play with your arrangements and, um, and get it just the way you want it and then just kind of secure it with a couple little drops of glue. I also recommend that you trim the um, thread so it's flush with the edge of your card and seal those ends down good with some glue so it doesn't fray or pull up. Um, the other embellishment I decided to add were some little clear gems that can be found in the floral section of your craft store and you get a humongous bag, like a lifetime supply for you and your friends for like a couple dollars. Uh, but they're really great for adding little bubbles on nautical cards or even coloring with your alcohol markers or alcohol inks and using them um, for flower centers or do drops or whatever you want. They're just really fun. I think they're just called um, like clear acrylic gems or something that they're but they're right in the floral section of like Michael's or Joann's or even on Amazon I'm sure. But there you can see I've got both of the cards done. I really like the way they turned out and it's great to have cards like this that can go for a boy or a girl for a birthday card and uh, they're going to go in my card stash. Thank you so much for watching. I'll put links to all the products I used in the video description. Buying through those affiliate links helped my channel so I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy Happy crafting.